uh, this afternoon's guest with us. We're going to be talking about buying houses by the book with real estate attorney Crystal Kimbrough. Thank Hi, you everyone. So, much. <laughs> so tell us what sparked your interest in becoming an attorney. Okay, so if I'm being honest with myself, I was groomed to be an attorney somewhat. Um, my mother has a legal background and um, I just sort of naturally took interest because of her career path. Um, I just kind of solidified that interest when I did a program out in Palo Alto um, where I had to do a mock trial. So that, and it was like a summer long program. That program taught me two things. It taught me one, that I wanted to be a lawyer for sure. But then two, it taught me that I definitely did not want to be a litigator. <laughs> so here we are in transactional law. So when did you participate in that mock trial program? Was it when you were in a college or high school or when did that happen? This was, this was, po this was, um, was it college? I feel like everything just kind of runs together past a certain age. I want to say this was college. Um, cause I, I know for sure I hadn't been to law school yet. And why did you decide to focus on real estate law? Because I know there's a, a lot of different areas when it comes to like transactional, you know? Yes. Yes. So I wanted to do something in that, that, that would allow me personal interactions with my, with my clients. I know I wanted to be a part of a pleasurable experience. So that ruled out family law. Um, for the most part, family law is a little heavy. <laughs> um, and I was, I did an intern, a le while, while I was in law school, I was a legal intern at the Coca-Cola factory. And I established a really good relationship with my boss for the summer who introduced me to the realm of real estate. Um, and so from that, I kind of dipped my toe in it a little bit to really kind of feel for what even the industry was. Cause at that point, real estate attorney, even that term is just broad. What does that mean? Is that homeowner association claims, is that landlord tenant disputes, is that closings? So that introduction just dipped my toe. And um, from there, it's just kind of been a domino effect into establishing my specific niche. Now, um, being able to intern at Coca-Cola in their legal department is a very, you know, coveted position. How were you able to secure that opportunity for yourself? So I would want to say just me alone, <laughs> but ultimately my, um, my law school, Southern Law, every year they have at least one or two um, students that are afforded the opportunity of summering at the Coca-Cola factory. So I submitted my application with however many others, and I was just, you know, one of the ones that, that was chosen. So I was very fortunate. I mean, I don't know if you guys are aspiring attorneys or what, but Kiana, you know this. Summer associate positions is really nothing but being spoiled for the summer while getting paid to do it. Uh, and and, and Coca-Cola fact, the Coca-Cola company, you know, it was no different. Um, I think they had the, the FIFA tournament going, um, going on in and around that time. So they had sponsorships like Dairy Queen in the lobby, just there to tempt you with all kind of treats. And so it was fun. We did, we did work though, but it was fun. What were some of the types of projects that you were able to work on during your time at Coca-Cola? If you can remember any. Um, one particular, so we jumped from department to, de to department. And um, one of the departments that, that I really, really enjoyed as well was the intellectual property. And there we, um, we essentially had to present a potential trademark of, of the Coca-Cola company because you guys know the Coca-Cola company has a bunch of different products that you don't even know are owned by Coca-Cola. And so they proposed, we had to put together a proposal and a proposed trademark for this up and coming uh, brand that they were launching. So we had to present to the entire department, which was like 200 attorneys or something like that. So uh, it was a little intimidating, but it was fun. I imagine now you own your own firm. How long did it take you um, as far as working in real estate before you decided to branch out on your own and 
what were you, what was your first steps in actually stepping into doing real estate transactional work? Uh, so I wouldn't suggest this for anyone um, else. I um, at the time I only had myself to worry about, so I kind of naively stepped into the real estate closing realm. And within a year, decided I wanted to go out and start my own practice. I wanted hands-on ex experience with client relations, and I wanted to be able to manage um, those client relationships firsthand. So I was a year in before I decided to do it on my own. <laughs> um, what are some of the strategies that you've been using to create opportunities for yourself? Because I can imagine when we talk about closings, that's when people buy and sell a home. How do you find opportunities to work on those closings? So um, just to kind of briefly explain, like what you said, when in the state of Georgia, when you purchase property, real property, or when you sell real property or refinance a loan, you need a Georgia licensed attorney. So that's where my firm, Kimbrough Law, comes into play. We do all the due diligence to ensure title to the property is clear and marketable so that the lender's security interest is protected, or if it's a cash transaction, the buyer's interests are protected. And um, some of the strategies for growing the business have kind of been a uh, wait and see, because uh, I didn't have a marketing background, had never owned a legitimate business before. Um, so I actually started out, and this was before social media is what it is. Uh, so I actually started out by reaching out to real estate agents through Zillow and Trulia and just asking them the coffee. I was very um, upfront about my position and what I wanted. Maybe out of 30 agents that I would actually sit down and have coffee with, one would actually close with us. And um, eight years later, it's just kind of been a domino effect. Now we do a little more strategic marketing or we market to certain type of um, strategic partners. Uh, but it it's a lot of book readings. It's, um, it's a lot of podcasts. Um, I'm always open to learning. It doesn't matter if that person has a law practice or not, because I think it's important for everyone to realize that um, a lot of your business savvy is translates into other, other uh, ways. Explain um, to our students, what is a typical week like for you, for instance, leading up to the closing, be it buying or selling, you know, a home? So for finance transactions, uh, most of the time, it takes a roughly 30 to 45 days to close a finance transaction. Most of that is dependent on whenever the lender is clear to close, is what they call it. Um, our due diligence, personally, it takes about two weeks depending on if title is clear or not. Um, a quick instance of a title not being clear is if the property was owned by a grandmother, that grandmother has died and her estate has yet to be probated. Um, that wouldn't be, we wouldn't have clear title at that point and that would kind of take some time to clear up. Uh, our firm personally wouldn't conduct the probate, but we have referral partners that can easily get you um, hopefully get you through the process. What would you say are some of the funny and or stressful things that happen in your line of work? Oh my gosh. Well, whenever you're dealing with financial services to some degree, it's very personal and people get very emotional. Understandably so. Um, I have unfortunately had a husband and wife refuse to close together because the husband was convinced the wife would try to kill him at the closing table in public in front of everyone. Oh my goodness. So obviously they were going through a divorce <laughs> and that particular closing was to get the husband off of the mortgage. Um, so I wouldn't put that in the funny category. I would put that in the interesting category. Um, I've had dogs show up to closing dogs that were not service animals mind you and the lady who brought her two dogs <laughs> the security because we our office is in a high rise the security immediately stopped her and said ma'am are these service dogs if not they have to leave she said 
you can call the police now because I'm not going anywhere and neither are my dogs. <laughs> I would put that in the funny category because it wasn't anything life threatening, but, uh, but it was interesting. Um, I have so many instances and so many stories. I mean, I have definitely mastered the art of just going with the flow and, and trying to minimize, you know, emotions at times because people can get kind of riled up when it comes to, to the closing process. Can you share some interesting things about being an attorney or just being a real estate attorney that most people would not know that you all have to deal with? Well, it's funny because most people don't know about us in general. <laughs> when you hear closing attorney, even, even as a law student, I didn't know exactly what that was. Um, so I think the first step is just to kind of educate people about our existence and, and, and depending on the state you're in, the necessity. Every state has different requirements, of course, and some states do not require an attorney to issue a title opinion, but in Georgia, a title opinion is required, which can only be done by us. So I think the first step is just to educate. The second step is to, um, to educate on the benefits of real estate, obviously. Um, one of the best parts of what I do is you are helping people achieve the American dream, whether that be as an investor or a homeowner. Um, but there's so many things, so many liability um, concerns, so many tax incentives that people are just not aware of that I wish, you know, I'm not an accountant, so I don't give tax advice, but I just, I just, can only hope that people become more aware and knowledgeable about the process and demystify the process in general. A lot of people think they're not ready, they don't have enough money. And realistically, 7.5 times out of 10, that's not true. So would you say that um, learning for you as a real estate attorney is an ongoing process because maybe rules and regulations are changing? How does that work out for for you and continuing legal education once you become a real estate attorney? Definitely, like any other area of law, the rules and regulations are consistently evolving. Um, in addition to <clears throat> the, the code, the Georgia code, we also have an ethical standard that we have to uphold and those ethical standards even change. Um, in my industry specifically, we have this thing called title standards, which is essentially um, an opinion issue that deems certain acts um, acceptable and other acts unacceptable. Um, so that's ethical standards, title standards, and legal standards. <laughs> uh, so, but that's, that's every industry that's not unique to, to what I do. Um, and it's just important to uphold um, your integrity as much as possible. For students who are interested in learning more about becoming a real estate attorney, what resources would you suggest that they take a look at? That's a good question. Uh, we're not reinventing the wheel. When I first got started, I just Googled a lot of information, if I'm being honest. you. Um, there's not much that's not online as far as informational purposes. And you just have to do your best to weed through the legitimate sites and the, you know, non-legitimate sites. A very good resource is a mentor. Um, if you are a law student or want to be a law student and you know you wanted to get into real estate law, I would start by going to whatever state you're in. Every state has a state bar association. If you go to that State Bars Association website, you can actually look up the member directory. The members consist of all of the attorneys that are licensed in that state. If you can locate a mentor to just kind of shoot you some advice, um, then that is a really good starting point because what you need is just a general idea of what you need to, excuse me, of what you need to do. Okay, I want to become a closing attorney. What all does that involve? What, you know, what specific steps do do we have to conduct as closing attorneys? So let's say there's 15 steps to conducting your due diligence as a closing attorney. Then you're gonna work, work your way through each step to determine the best way that you think it is to go about completing that, those steps um, and to have a mentor to kind of uh, back you to ensure you're, you're remaining compliant. 
um, if you want to be a real estate attorney specifically, you're going to be working with a title company in which you is issue title insurance through. Use those underwriters um, with the title company to really work for you. If you have a question, ask those underwriters. They're there to protect the title company, which essentially is your partner, your business partner. Utilize your resources as much as possible. Um, do as much research on your own. Do not ask a mentor something that you can easily find out yourself. And also try to make whatever your propositioning to a potential or potential mentor, see if there's some kind of benefit that you can provide to them so that it's a mutually beneficial relationship so you're not just getting, 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 but you're also giving. How did you go about finding your mentor in the real estate industry? It was just a referral, a friend of a friend of a friend. My initial connection to, uh, to the closing world came from my boss at the Coca-Cola factory. But then from there, I met another closing attorney, you know, as you kind of do your research and you dig a little bit, and it turns out this closing attorney had his own practice and we had a mutual friend. So that made sense. Um, and it really just has blossomed by me networking and just doing my due diligence to, to know and, and to become um, as knowledgeable as possible. Lastly, what is the best piece of career advice that you would give your younger self? Ah. That's an interesting question because I kind of want to say, I, I, I wish I would have done a little more research in the industry because I would have saved myself some, some heartache. But at the same time, I want to caution people to not do so much research that it deters you from just going for it. Um, it's my natural inclination to just do it. Um, but I definitely could have benefited from knowing a little more about the liabilities and, you know, the business side of what I do as an attorney. So where can people learn more about you and your firm online or on social media? So our firm is social. Um, so our website, our URL is kimbro-law.com, K-I-M-B-R-O-U-G-H-law.com. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and Instagram at Kimbro Law LLC. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your journey in real estate law with us. Thank you. It's so good seeing you. Likewise. And if you want to join us at our last session of the day, it must be the cut with Houston's Barber to the Stars, Nick Howard. Feel free to check in at four o'clock and we'll see you all then. Thanks, Crystal.